where better to wrap things up than the very heart of London. We're on Whitehall and Lord Nelson himself has the best seat in the house as we watch the tour of Britain reach its climax. It started just the way you might have imagined. Mark Cavendish winning at the very first time of asking, taking the stage into Dumfries. The weather may not have been golden, but his jersey was. No sooner had it all got underway though, than it got blown away. Appalling winds in Blackpool meant that all Mark Cavendish got up to that day was a visit to the ballroom. The music played on, but not the tour. When the race restarted, Sky and HTC High Road were so concerned with marking each other that they forgot to watch Rabobank and Lars Boom bust the race apart. The leader's jersey he would not be parted with. They tried hard enough, but the Dutchman couldn't be shifted. Not in Care Philly, where Steve Cummings attacked, only for Tor Hushoft to ride out the win in the rainbow jersey. And not on stage five either, where the race came together for a seaside sprint into Exmouth. Mark Renshaw and Mark Cavendish crossing the line in first and second, but the wrong way round this time. Any lingering doubts about the overall race lead were extinguished on stage six when Ian Bibby and Geraint Thomas took each other out and Lars Boom hammered home his superiority. Plane sailing then on the Norfolk Broads and the breakaway which stayed away. Gediminas Bagdonas getting the royal treatment into Sandringham. But nothing has budged Mr Boom. He leads the field into London. This year the start finish has returned to Whitehall close to the end of Downing Street. The riders then head up to Trafalgar Square, down to the embankment alongside the Thames to turn at Tower Hill before retracing their tracks back to Big Ben, clipping Parliament Square and then the run into the line. The Tour of Britain concludes with its now traditional stop-off in London, likely to be the fastest stage of 2011. The route is lined by one of the most famous skylines in the world, with Big Ben, Downing Street, Trafalgar Square, the Tower of London, the London Eye and the Houses of Parliament all providing the backdrop to the action at some stage. Yes, the 2011 edition of the Tour of Britain is nearly at an end and today it does reach its big finale on the streets of London. Yanto, uh, when all is said and done, what memories are you going to take away from this tour? I think there's a few to be fair. Uh, first and second by the two marks, uh, Cavendish taking the win on the first stage. I think that was a great uh, opening the account for the British riders. Um, then obviously we had that cancelled stage, which was a bit difficult into Blackpool, but you know I think the right decision was made. Um, interestingly then, we saw John Tin and Locke really start to press on and show his climbing ability uh, up Gun Hill, which was fantastic to do, which he also repeated, really putting everybody away up uh, the Haytor climb into Devon, which is his home roads. Um, Another, another victory, I think, for uh, Lars Boom, which was a very prominent, um, you know, they took everybody by surprise and he really kind of showed and stamped his authority on He's that. He's been a class act, really, hasn't he? Absolutely. He, he, he stamped his authority that day and it, we kind of had to sit up and take note. Um, then, unfortunately, you know, we follow on with uh, the unfortunate crash of uh, Bibby and uh, Garrett Thomas, who've unfortunately taken each other out, which was obviously very disappointing. And I think a turning point where we realised it probably wasn't going to happen for Geraint on that day so um, you know now we're back here in London I think that's a great great place to finish this race. We are indeed two more stages although I mean technically they're 8A and 8B because they're both very short uh, a time trial and then a final criterium race. Now what about the time trial 8.8 .8 kilometers long it's not overly technical is it though? Not overly technical but it is definitely two distinct stages uh, not one and uh, one and a half if you like. Um, there, there is some long straights and a fast there are fast uh, straights as well but they are they're going to come to the 90 degree corners Obviously, everybody's going to have a chance to ride around and, and have a recce, but still there is probably one or two seconds to be gained or lost on each corner, depending on whether they're going fast or slow. Indeed, and they're very tightly packed in certain areas of the GC table, at least. We'll come on to that in a second. But the setting itself, huge crowds up and down Whitehall and, and the embankment. Um, this is on a scale that you could compare with the Tour de France. This is as big as bike racing gets, really, in that sense, isn't it? Absolutely. It's an iconic setting, and um, I think it does justice to the race. Uh, it's a shame that it wasn't here last year, but we're very grateful to be back now. Um, gives everybody, the public, a chance to see what a proper bike race is. And as a rider, you're far more exhilarated riding with such, uh, such big crowds who, you know, generally in this country now are very educated. Quite right. Well said. It's going to be a real spectacle, and for a bunch of riders in today's time trial, there's an awful lot still at stake. 28 seconds is a lot, but uh, it's not too much, of course. It's not uh, like comfortable, you can ride easy. So I'm going to go full and uh, try to win the, the time trial also. 
If you're going to make good a, a few seconds, is the time trial the place to do it or is it, is it the sprints and the crit later? Uh, for me, the time trial, because I don't think I can sprint very fast and I think there's maybe a lot of people going to go for the time bonuses, so that would be more difficult, so just got to floor the time trial. Funnily enough, the last tour Britain and I did was 2007 where Cav won the prologue. Um, this year, I think having the national stripes on my back will be some extra motivation for me. And the course looks like it'll suit me, you know, short but not too short and nice and flat just for pure high speed, I think. It's a fantastic scene, isn't it? Right in the middle of London and, and big crowds. It's like a, almost like a prologue on a grand tour. Yeah, a prologue or uh, like, like in the afternoon, it's something like the Champs Elysees in, uh, in Paris after the tour, I think. Just said it to my teammates, maybe this is uh, nicer, I think this is different and uh, yeah, I, like, I like it more. The time trial, isolated agony, individual pain with only one point to beat the clock from A to B. Today it's the hors d'oeuvre for the final day's racing as riders shed and claim seconds of their riders. The early pace setter of the day was Vacon Soleil's new Vestra with a time of 10.19.96. That stood until Alex Dowsett, resplendently white in the skin suit of the national time trial champion, took to the start round. True to form, tore into the course, eating up London's tarmac and smashing a five second hole into Vestra's time, comfortably taking the lead. But there were plenty of quality riders still to come. We're looking here at Mark Cavendish, the next starter in this short time trial. And of course the super sprinter can certainly turn on the style in the short time trial. He won the prologue a few years ago in the Tour of Britain and he's getting a huge ovation. Just catching a glimpse here of the Australian, Rory Sutherland. He's out on the course, settling down to a good rhythm as we get back to Mark Cavendish to have a look at his cornering technique. Yeah, he's just gone round embankment at the moment, onto the, the embankment itself. He'll go up all the way towards uh, the Tower of London and then back all the way towards the finish. He'll probably have that afternoon criterium on his mind, but we go back to the starting house, and now it's Garen Thomas. Garen Thomas, who can really ride quick against the clock. He's an Olympic gold medalist for the team for soon, and he won the Tour of Bavaria earlier this year with a good time trial performance. Well, IG Markets, the sponsor at the back, is a, a London-based company, so all the Sky Riders will be up for today's two stages to try and get a great performance. And, of course, they're on those time trial bikes now, so different positions with those uh, different aero-style bars at the front. You've got to be fully concentrated. Have a look at this. There's a couple of difficult corners right at the start of this uh, time trial, but onto the embankment is pretty much straight up all the way to the Tower of London, all the way back with a couple of corners towards the finish, so it will suit the big powerhouses that can time trial. Well, of course, Thomas has been in the wars during this uh, tour. He took a heavy fall on one of the earlier stages. Well, next from Leopard Trek is Juice Postuma just setting off. He's 52 seconds back from the gold jersey in uh, a high position of 10th. Well, this is an important race for a lot of these teams. We come down to the time trial, and it's uh, pretty much um, looking at a large boom. Uh, it's going to be very difficult to uh, take that gold IG Markets jersey off him, but uh, there's still the two other top places to come. Well, back with Thomas briefly there, and you could see that he was still going well as we look at the finishing effort here of Mark Cavendish. Gripping his teeth and gulping in the air. Here comes Cavendish to the line. 10 minutes, 42 seconds then for Mark Cavendish. That's a respectable finishing time. No, that's a fantastic time. You've got to remember there are points in this for the that day blue points jersey, and that's what uh, Mark Cavendish wants. We've almost got a catching situation here, look. Remember these riders, the uh, seeded riders on the higher classification position go off at two minute intervals and the rest of the field are one minute apart back to Jan Barter of the Czech Republic riding on team NetApp now this is one of the riders that we are not too sure about his time trialing potential yeah he's a strong lad he's been in a few breakaways in a lot of these races as the team car comes up alongside uh, Jus and gives him a wee bit of information and a bit of encouragement which uh, sometimes is uh, good in these races some of the other teams have got loudspeakers as you've got to remember they aren't allowed to use radios so you can see the running time of our next finisher coming up to the line this is going to be Geron Thomas 10 minutes and 22 seconds and still ticking but this is a good ride here then by Thomas as he comes up to the line let's have a look at the clock here he is now 
Look at that, 10 minutes 30. Thomas the Welshman flying. He's flying at the moment and setting, uh, setting this uh, course alight. And uh, back to Postuma here. And you just see the time trial position and the time trial bikes these use. Very different to what they've been using all these uh, other stages. Now then, Steve Cummings. Now, this is the man that really does stand to gain a lot from the time trial. Cummings is currently fifth overall. He's 32 seconds down on Lars Boom, who holds the gold jersey. But the riders immediately above Cummings, Gerdeman, Lloyd and Koenig, and nowhere near as good time trialers as Cummings. So this is the race of his life because he can elevate himself up here into the second position overall. Well, we are expecting Steve Cummings to produce that result and move up onto a podium position he has done it before, he has finished second in the Tour of Britain in years gone by but uh, this is another opportunity here in London. Here comes Postuma up to the line, there's the time 10.40 well we're getting a raft of good times now but nobody at the moment threatening that leading time of Dowsett on 10 minutes 14.7 yeah, well, a lot of these riders round about the same time, about ten and a half minutes, and uh, only seconds are going to separate the top of this leaderboard. It just goes to show you how fast Dowsett has ridden round this course. Well, his mid-time uh, split was five minutes and two seconds, so that tells you just how quick Dowsett is. And, of course, he got a silver medal in the Commonwealth Games in New Delhi. Here we are, Linus Gerdeman. He's next to roll away, and Gerdeman must surely know that his overall position is under pressure because he's fourth at the start of the time trial and he's only one second ahead of the man you're looking at, Cummings. And Cummings has got the bit between his teeth and he knows he can get ahead of Gerdeman. Well, Gerdeman is a strong rider, not a time trial specialist, and we expect him to see a good performance by him, but Steve Cummings is, a, as you said to you, a better time trialist. Now, look at this, out of the saddle and sprinting to the line, Jan Barter, who is on exactly the same time as Cummings overall, trying to get that extra bit of uh, pace out, and that's a good time by Barter. As we look at Connig, Connig now coming out of the starting house, and Connig is the man second overall in the race, 28 seconds behind Boom. So he's another man under pressure, by Cummings. Yeah, Cummings has got all to play for. I don't think he's going to have enough uh, uh, time to beat uh, Lars Boom into that uh, IG Markets gold jersey, but he can put himself right up there in the overall classification. Well, this is Koenig, another rider from the Czech Republic. Early days for him in the time trial, but he knows he's under pressure. And the last man to go is Lars Boom, the Dutchman, the leader of the Tour of Britain. And this is a man who's won the prologue in the Dauphiné and the Paris-Nice, and he's a former World Under-23 time trial champion. Look at the style of the man. He's sprinting to get that gear going. Not only is he in the leader's jersey, he wants to win this time trial as well. Now then, the arrival of Steve Cummings. Let's have a look at his time coming up to the line. 10.23, third quickest time of the day. Only Dowsett set and Vestra have gone quicker now then the rest of the riders will know that their overall positions are under threat well here we have uh, Gerdeman he's only got one kilometre to go and he looks as if he's toiling at the moment back to Lars Boom the leader at the moment and he's uh, going all the way up through this tunnel all the way up towards uh, the Tower of London and he'll be back again and he looks as if he's flying at the moment he's such a stylish rider Lars Boom we've never had a winner from Holland in the Tour of Britain overall but Boom certainly is pitching for that title. Here comes the next finisher. Gerdeman's coming up here, he's struggling a wee bit at the moment, he's all over the place, it's not the smooth action you'd see from a time trial specialist, as you see the heads rocking and rolling, I'm thinking that Gerdeman's slipping down the order of the general classification at the moment. Certainly not an aerodynamic style, is it? But back to uh, Boom, who really has got that gear spinning, and I can tell you, his midway split time was only one second slower than Dowsett on 5 minutes 03, so the Dutchman is on a ride. He's certainly getting some encouragement from the team car. This sort of speaker system by a lot of the top teams is used throughout pretty much the whole of Europe to give their riders so much encouragement in a short time trial like this. Well, here's Gerdeman coming in and look at the clock ticking away. He knows he's lost his place overall then to Cummings. Let's have a look at this. Oh, 10.45, Cummings went to 10.23. So that means that Cummings is moving up the overall classification. And this is Koenig, the second place in overall, coming up to finish his time trial effort today. Well, he's lost nearly 27 seconds on Cummings in this test against the clock. So that means the man that started second overall, and that time will cost him several placings. Now then, one man to arrive. 
And that is the overall race leader, Lost Boom. Here he comes, holding that aerodynamic position. His head just waving from side to side as he gulps in the air. He's going to swing into Bridge Street and then into Parliament Street for the final run to the line. Well, he passes Big Ben and he's only got one corner to go and he'll be in the finishing straight. And he has to be quick to beat Be Douse its time. And as a true champion in the overall leader's jersey, he is delivering a very, very polished performance against the clock. And that means that he's going to stand up on the start line ready for the concluding criterium, still wearing that gold jersey. This is the run then to the line. And remember, Dowsett's winning time, 10.14.7. That's gone. So the British time trial champion has won the time trial. But let's have a look at Boom's finishing time, 10.19. Second in the test against the clock, just a tad quicker than Vestra. And that's going to keep him in that gold jersey, ready for the final stage, the 55-mile criterium around the centre of London. We are in for a grand finale here. Don't go away. Confirmation of Dowsett's win then by five seconds to Vestra and Boom. Steve Cummings in fourth, seven seconds better off than his teammate Geraint Thomas. Tor Hushoft incidentally crossed the line in the eighth best time. Apart from top spot, it's all change in the general classification. Cummings has torn into second place. Jan Barta and Linus Gerdeman are separated by just one second in a battle for the podium. Dan Lloyd drops down to 10th, with John Tien and Locke looking good in sixth place at one minute, three seconds. But it's a first stage win for Team Sky on the Tour of Britain and a landmark win for a very special talent. Alex Dowsett wins the London time trial. The last couple of days I haven't been feeling too great on the bike, but I've always done what's been asked of me of the team. And today I sort of woke up and when you get out of bed, you sort of know how you're going to feel that day and it didn't really hurt as much as it has done the last couple of days. So I thought I might be on for a good ride today and everything just went right. Well, part one of the London experience of the Tour of Britain is complete. The time trial done and dusted and a fabulous individual win there for Team Sky's Alex Dowsett in the national colours of the champion as well. Um, fantastic ride, wasn't it? He wanted to win it, he felt good, uh, but that's a big margin in the end he's ridden out. Yeah, absolutely, especially against uh, Lars Boom. You know, honestly, he couldn't have had it better on, uh, on home soil in his national champs jersey uh, and then putting away some of the best short time trial specialists in the world. You know, great ride. And just a measure of how much it meant to Lars Boom, he wanted that. I passed him when he came over here. He was not happy to be pipped into second place there. No, absolutely not. I mean, uh, you know, the guy's not used to getting beaten that often on a time trial of this kind of distance. But, you know, Alex thoroughly deserves it. He's, you know, he, you couldn't want for a better you know, ambassador and winner, uh, especially here in London, it's great. Great news for Team Sky as well, because Steve Cummings ridden a great time trial and popped himself up into second place in the overall classification. Yeah, to be fair to Steve, I mean, he's a class act and he's just shown that he's got an all-round talent. He's been climbing well. He's been slightly in the shadow of Geraint for most of the week, but actually, you know, we've seen it. Uh, Sky do have strength in depth and, um, you know, he, he put a good ride in today and definitely came out with a good result. So without a shadow of a doubt, Sky's best stage so far. Uh, not so good, though, for Daniel Lloyd, the Garmin Cervelo rider. He started the day in third place. Well, he's not going to be able to defend that now. He's lost a lot of time. No, Daniel's been riding uh, on the front a lot this season. Um, it's a very different effort. And to do that 8.8 Ks flat out, flat out, it's quite, you know, it's quite hard to transfer over that kind, of, that kind of pace. So, you know, he'll be disappointed. But if I think in reflection, when he looks against the competition he was up against, it, it's, I don't think he'll be too hard on himself. OK. Well, the riders have a couple of hours to draw breath and then get on with the final stage, stage 8B of the Tour of Britain. In the meantime, though, for the vast crowds in central London, a couple of support acts, including the IG Markets hot lap. And I can tell you from personal experience, it was reasonably hot. OK, just a few minutes before I have to get on that start ramp and do this time trial. Um, I was roped into doing this months ago. It didn't occur to me then that I'd have to humiliate myself in front of, what, 100,000 people in London? Worst idea I've ever had. Can't say I'm looking forward to it. Um, so just shut your eyes for the next few minutes of television, please. Nervous doesn't do it justice. It's one thing talking about cycling, it's another thing doing it. I knew this, of course, in theory, but now I was being presented with a lung rasp in practice. Yanto's advice had been simple, don't go off too fast, don't put yourself in the red. So of course that's exactly what I did. The sight of Dean Macy's huge form coming ever closer to me spurred me on. By Tower Hill, I almost had him. But once an athlete, 
Always an athlete. That was as close as I got. Graham Bell then shot past and suddenly I knew my place. I rode the rest with my tail between my legs firmly put in my place. Not that you'd know it from my over celebration. I was just glad it had finished. All in all though, a rare privilege and thoroughly good fun in a strange kind of way. I decided we wanted to do something that had never been done before the Tour of Britain. We heard they were doing a time trial and uh, doing something like the hot lap seemed like a, a great way to get people involved, get, allow people to ride like a pro, experience the crowd, experience riding on the closed roads. And I think everyone's just had a fantastic day, got to meet lots of celebrities, gold medal winners from the Olympics, and just everyone seems to have had a fantastic time. Yes, indeed, the IG Markets hot lap, an excellent event. I have to say probably a little bit too fast and painful for my liking. Something that was a bit more sedate, family orientated, calmer and frankly more relaxed was the uh, prostate cancer charity tour ride. Thousands of riders taken to the streets of London along the same course just for the hell of it really to enjoy the roads without any traffic and just to enjoy the sights of London given over to uh, cyclists. It's not the first time we've seen this happen. Uh, Owen Sharp, you're the CEO of the Prostate Cancer Charity. These events are growing in stature and popularity, aren't they, year on year? Absolutely they are. They're, they're a really big, important part of what we do every year. Um, the, the rides give us the opportunity to go out, promote prostate cancer as a cause, which is uh, it's the fourth most common cancer in the UK and it's the most common cancer in men. Uh, and we know that cycling is one of the biggest participation sports for men in the age risk group of prostate cancer. So it's a brilliant opportunity to bring the two together and to see so many people, hundreds and hundreds literally today, uh, participating, taking part, having fun, raising some money and raising awareness. So it couldn't be better. Money and awareness, hugely important in, in what you do. Did you ride yourself or not? I didn't. I had the honour of waving the flag. So <laughs> that was my excuse. Um, my big commitment is I'm run, running the marathon for the charity next year. So I'm preserving my knee for that. But there was so many of the team as well as members of the public there. Our president was out there running, riding, taking it a little bit too competitively, I think. But really good stuff and really good to see so many people taking part. Well, well done. It's a terrific event. I'm sure it'll grow on year on year. Good luck with the marathon. Um, so that was the uh, tour ride. Perhaps a little bit faster was the actual race itself. Stage 8B, the final stage of the Tour of Britain, in the hands of Hugh Porter and Brian Smith, your commentary team. So the 80 survivors roll out for the start of the final stage, and this is 55 miles, stage 8B. And still in that gold jersey is Lars Boom of Rabobank, and in fact he's increased his lead after the time trial. But we've got an attack on already here, the first man to go away, guess what, it's Anne Post again. I tell you what, every day Anne Post have been on the tack, this is Ronan McLaughlin trying to go clear. Well, the most aggressive team in this race took off pretty much from the start line and uh, he's not been uh, joined by anybody at the moment, but I'm pretty sure it'll be a reaction pretty soon. But this, of course, is a perfect opportunity for him to get maximum publicity for his team sponsor. He looks back, wondering who he's going to chase him, but at the moment, nobody seems to be interested. So McLaughlin is the lone leader going away. He's no threat, of course, to the overall situation. He's 58, he's almost 16 minutes back, but it's a super opportunity for him to bask in the glory of racing in front of this massive crowd. Well, that is the first time I've seen him in a breakaway. He's really kicking it out, and uh, he's looking behind to see a bit. He gets a reaction that I'm pretty sure he's got to see absolutely nothing, because he took off from the blocks, and a lot of riders might not even know he's away yet. And, of course, his uh, teammate, Piet uh, Gilibert, has already won the Yodel Spring competition. He's in an unassailable position. But, of course, there's always the glory of winning a sprint here in the heart of the City of London. Well, still no reaction from the peloton, and most of these riders from the time trial this morning would like to just get one or two laps out of the way and just get kind of warmed up. But uh, McLaughlin has decided otherwise, and he wants to take out the glory in the first couple of laps. And let me uh, just remind you of the point situation in the sprints. It's five for first, three for second, two for third, and one for fourth. Now, the overall leader in this competition, Pieter Gilibert, he can't be beaten, as I said. He has already amassed 36 points, and second is Russell Hampton on 13. So there's only 15 at stake today if the same rider wins all three. But, of course, what is important, if the same rider won all three, he'd go up into second overall, and the prizes go down to three in that competition. 
Yeah, there is still some prizes to be won. Most of these people just want to win this competition and get the publicity from the podium as McLaughlin kicks out of the, the hairpin corner at the bottom side. We have got a reaction at the moment. Just see a glimpse of our black jersey trying to come across. Looks like one of the riders from Rafa Conda Sharp to me or Endura as we take the U-turn at the far end of this loop. Now then, let me just remind you also, normally there are time bonuses on the line in these three sprints, three seconds, two seconds and one second, but there are only time bonuses available on the second sprint on the last stage today. Also, there is six, four and two for the first three over the line. And here we are, the junction is going to be made and the rider coming up to join McLaughlin is one of the Rafa Conda Sharp team. Yeah, this is a, a good effort here by the Rafa Condor Sharp rider. Looks to me as if that's a Christian House, the former British road race champion. And Rafa are a, a, a London sponsor, London based sponsor, and it's going to be great for them. So these two guys in front are pretty much just out there for more of the publicity because I think as the race gets into the final few laps, you're going to see more of the stronger come, teams come to the front for a bunch finish. And of course, the bike he's riding, Condor, that is a London based bike shop as well. Confirmed on our screen. It is Christian House and McLaughlin. Now, House. He's one of these riders that always revels in a lone attack. In the test event for the Olympics just a few weeks ago, he was out there all day, virtually from the start, and only gets swept up in the concluding kilometres. So House will really enjoy this escape. Well, the question has to be, who are, who's going to join them? Are we going to see any reaction from the, the rest of the riders? As you said, you, they're not any threat to the overall. And you see the gap just growing at the moment, maybe about 20, 25 seconds with the, the orange jerseys of Rabobank, just controlling things at the moment. Yeah, just confirming that Christian House is actually uh, 11 minutes back from the overall lead, so last boom won't have any worries at all, but it is always pretty illogical for anybody to dislodge the overall leader in a criterion at the end. Now then, we've got a rider trying to go clear from Endura. Now then, if he can join these two, there is an opportunity that they may enjoy a good escape for a long time here. Well, as the only Estonian rider in the, uh, the race today, and that's uh, Rennie Muldry trying to come across this gap. Might have left it a wee bit too late because two against one, he's going to have a hard ride to try and get across to these two riders. But if he can get across, it'll mean there'll be three riders in this lead group. And Mondry it is then, trying to bridge, but he hasn't made too much of a gap on the head of the peloton. He's trying to distance himself from the bunch. And you can see that uh, the line is thinning out here at the front, and Rabobank are keeping the pressure on. As we came across the line there, the gap was 20 seconds. And so it's just holding at that at the moment. And, uh, you know, we're getting, again, no reaction, no big reaction from the field. Rabobank just controlling things. HTC near the front with the riders from Eurocar just down the back. So these two enjoying their freedom and they have distanced themselves from the clutches of the peloton and uh, it looked to me last time that Mandri was going backwards and I think you'll find the next time we see him he could have been swept up by the bunch but these two have made the perfect move and they're going to enjoy, enjoy their freedom and let's see 19 seconds now. We're looking at the front of the bunch and you've got two riders from HDC High Road followed by the orange jerseys of Rabobank. And they're just setting a tempo. They're going to keep it about 20, 30 seconds because they don't want too many riders to go up the road and give them difficulties in the last few laps. And at the moment, the course bathed in glorious sunshine and in the finish area, just like the Tour de France, everybody is enjoying lunch and drinking their wine and basking in the atmosphere. This is an ideal way to conclude a Tour of Britain that really has been the best ever since its inception in 2004. Well, just look at the field. They are stretched out here. It isn't fragmenting, but they're stretched. There's the world champion, Tour Khrushchev. No doubt on his mind, the defence of his world title, one week today in Copenhagen. Well, back to the front of this uh, race, and you've got Christian House pushing a good tempo at the front, McLaughlin just in his shadow, and these two riders swapping turn for turn, and that means they're equally riding at the front. And Christian House, who in his early years lived in Texas, and then he went across to Belgium where he learned uh, the trade of bike racing before he came back here. 27 seconds, so it is growing. It's uh, getting to be quite a nice advantage. 
Well, we're expecting this gap to kind of yo-yo in about the 20, 30 seconds. I don't think that it's going to go up too much because uh, these riders are just controlling things. You've got to remember that uh, we come here, and the last time we came here in a major race, we saw Mark Cavendish won, and I think he'll want to win again here in London. And that, of course, that race you're referring to was the test event for the Olympics that took in two laps of the Box Hill circuit, and Cavendish roared down the mile on that occasion to take the victory. Now they're getting near to the... Uh, two turns that will line them up for the run to the line and that of course will be for the first of the yodel sprints today 5-3-2-1 on the line as I said a little earlier no time bonuses today in the first and the third sprints only in the middle one and it looks to me that they are going to ride through the line taking their turn they call it bit and bit each rider does a bit at the front swings over and they relay each other and that's how the pace is kept high just caught a glimpse of the yodel classification leader at the front that's Pieter Gillibert well, Shirley Bear has come up to the front just to try and take the last, you know, point. He's at the front at the moment and uh, he's got a couple of teammates just behind him. But for me, the Yodo Sprint competition has been totally dominated by uh, Ann Post. There we are, just as I said, McLaughlin over the line first, Christian Howe second. Now then, we'll be uh, concentrating on watching to see. Here we are, it's another Ann Post rider. <laughs> the Ann Post riders have made this their own property, this competition. Ann Post first and third. And let's have a look who's going to pick up the fourth spot. Well, there it is confirmed. Bagdonis, the Lithuanian, he got third. And Hazowski getting fourth. Tell you what, there's still a long way to go. Don't go away. Welcome back, and this is the final stage of the Tour of Britain. You're looking at the two leaders, Christian House in the black at the front, and McLaughlin. And we're approximately half a lap away from the second sprint in the Yodel competition. And this time there are time bonuses on the line, three, two and one. That won't affect the two at the front, but it'll be interesting to see who sprints for that one second for third. Well, this is Alec Dowsett for Team Sky, and he rode a tremendous time trial this morning. Back to his normal duties of riding at the front with uh, Michael Rogers to try and uh, keep control of these two riders that are away of McLaughlin and House. And McLaughlin and House still continue then to plough along. The lead's gone up again. It's 31 seconds, so they're tapping out a nice workmanlike rhythm. Yeah, they're just keeping them there about a 20, 30 second mark, not giving them too much. Dowsett and Rogers sitting at the front for uh, Team Sky. But uh, with these three, two and one, I'm pretty sure there's going to be a couple of riders maybe interested in sneaking a second. But really, Rafa Conda Sharp, they've had a very, very good tour indeed. I mean, they've won the King of the Mountains overall. And of course, there's no climbs today. And of course, Jonathan Tiernan and Locke on their squad. He's riding around here in that Skoda King of the Mountains jersey, virtually having 55 miles, laps of honour, really. Well, he was one of the revelations of this race, the Tour of Britain 2011, and uh, to win the Tour of Britain uh, King of the Mountains jersey, it's something that uh, a lot of the domestic teams have, have tried to tried to look at doing. One jersey, and Post have come here and won uh, the Yodo Sprints jersey, and to win that King of the Mountains jersey in the way it did was absolutely tremendous. And of course, that makes him the third British rider to clinch that overall crown for the King of the Mountains. Julian Wynn won it. And of course, the other winner was Ben Swift. And Ben Swift now rides on the Sky Squad. And Swift has also won a stage in the Tour of Britain when he was first home in Yeovil. So, these two carrying on and uh, knocking off the metres that separate them between uh, their front wheels and, of course, the line for the sprint. Well, this is what you have to do, just sheer... She had the workload at the front, McLaughlin just pulling over, Christian House coming up the inside, and uh, McLaughlin would just pull onto Christian House's wheel, and uh, you know, they've been doing this pretty much pr from the start of this stage today, they've been out there all the way from the start, as you've seen earlier on in the programme, McLaughlin attacked right from kilometre zero. And now we've got an evidence of Sky coming through, now why would they be doing that? Oh, Sky, you just mentioned one name there is Ben Swift. They have uh, won the stage in the morning, and uh, one of their sponsors, IG Markets, is just based uh, not too far away, and they want to try and win this uh, sprint with uh, Ben Swift. So Michael Rogers at the, is at the front for Team Sky. In second place, you've got Lars back, followed by pretty much the whole of the Rabobank team. And, of course, Steve Cummings is that leading man for the Sky team. Second overall, he's 36 seconds back from Boom after the time trial. And then the third place, Jan Barta, well, he's 20 seconds behind uh, Cummings. 
but Barta is only one second ahead of Gerdeman. So if these two get involved for that one second in the sprint, it's going to be interesting because should Gerdeman get the second, then he'll be level with Barta, lying third overall. Well, we are expecting them to sprint it out. A podium performance in the Tour of Britain, a 2.1 level second second tier uh, tour is uh, a great performance uh, to get on the podium. But these two riders in front won't contest it. I'm pretty sure that uh, the rider in green will uh, cross the line first because, as we said before, and Post have dominated this Yodo Sprints competition. But uh, it always normally ends up in a mass sprint finish, doesn't it, for a city centre uh, grand finale of a tour? I mean, on the Champs Elysees, we always get breakaways slipping away, but they get pulled back. And of course, Mark Cavendish is the specialist for that. And I can't see the HTC High Road team allowing these two to stay away and spoil the party. Surely they're going to try and set this up for either Renshaw or Cavendish to uh, provide the bookends of the tour for their team winning the opening stage and the final stage. Well, looking at the, uh, the teams that are riding at the front, you've got Team Sky and you've got HTC High Road. High Road are riding for Cavendish and uh, Sky are riding for Ben Swift. Ben Swift has uh, kind of struggled through this Tour of Britain, but ben you never know, and you've got to put your sprinter in the best opportunity, the best chance to try and win the stage. And to, for Ben Swift to win the stage here in the heart of London would be tremendous for Team Sky to win the time trial in the morning and this uh, criterium in the afternoon. This course placed absolutely perfectly in London. We're catching glimpses of the London Eye, Big Ben. We are in the heart of the city, and of course, with a finish in Whitehall. Another name to conjure with in the sprint, of course, is Cavendish's nemesis in the Tour de France when it comes to the green jersey, and that's Tour Hushoff, the world champion. Yeah, Hushoff in uh, the last uh, year or two has, seems to be concentrating more on the... Uh, more in the big performances in the classics and uh, you know he knows that he's not as fast as Cavendish but uh, again we're seeing a, another attack by one of the Endura riders and it's the same rider that tried to go across to them earlier on and that's a Rennie Maundry. Right so the same rider trying to get clear but he he's hardly uh, escaped he's been pulled back and that's Pieter Gilibert, the man that's coming into the wheel, the man who's won the Yodel Spring competition overall so and Post are not allowing anybody else to go away. We're just looking behind the green jerseys of uh, Anne Post, the uh, Grant Thornton team, and I did see a, a glimpse of uh, a rider just in the left-hand side, a white and blue, a NetApp rider, and that should be Jan Barta, and he'll be uh, trying to contest this sprint because he's trying to conserve the place he is at the moment on the podium. And he's third overall after the time trial this morning, 56 seconds back from the gold jersey. Fourth, as I said a little earlier, is Gerdeman of the Leopard Trek team at 57 seconds. So good spot there, Brian, to see Jan Barta. He's obviously teeing himself up here to try and grab the second that's available for finishing third. Swinging once again round the right-hander and the crowd are watching this on the big screen as well and the PA commentary is of course assisting those pictures so they're enjoying their moment just as though they were watching it on the television getting themselves organized here then for the second sprint this is mclaughlin at the front this will be the second time he's crossed the line first and it looks like christian house is quite happy to just trail the uh, rider on the anpos team well when you look at these two teams mclaughlin just taking that sprint there christian house now comes to the, the front and these two teams have dominated the uh, the other two jersey competitions of the Yodo Sprints jersey and the Skoda King of the Mountains. Here it is. Oh, look at that. The white and blue is the uh, strip then of the team NetApp rider. And it is Jan Barta. So that second is so important because it means that Barta is now two seconds ahead of Gerdeman to reinforce his third place. Welcome back, and we're in the lap of the final sprint, and they're heading on towards the tower at the uh, turn point of this very, very flat, fast circuit. And again, it's Alex Dowser at the front, Bram tanking for Rabobank in second place, followed by Lars Back. They are the other teams that are controlling these two riders in front of House and McLaughlin. Nice to see Dowsett uh, embracing the front of the peloton. His morale is obviously sky high and he's fully inspired after that brilliant victory in the time trial, his speciality. But still these two continue and uh, they are enjoying uh, the glory here out in front of this massive crowd. Well, the bunch not in any real urgency at the moment. Uh, they are just sitting there about 20, 30 seconds back from the two in front. 
and uh, the reason why Team Sky are riding so hard at the front is because they want to think of Ben Swift possibly for the stage but there's also this blue jersey of Gerang Thomas Gerang Thomas has to feature in the final uh, sprint because he, he took the lead in the uh, the points competition this morning so he wants to try and lead that and put a jersey competition into the lead of uh, Team Sky Well let's go down into the VIP area to join Ned Pat, it's great that the uh, Tour of Britain has been allowed to come back into central London for its uh, for its denouement, if you like. It's a great setting, isn't it? It's a wonderful, iconic setting. I mean, to finish on Whitehall, Downing Street behind us here and what have you, it is. It's an iconic setting and it's it's great that the race has come back in here. And, and look at the reception it's got. A huge, big crowd here today. Thoroughly deserving as well of the strongest field ever assembled for the Tour of Britain. Some proper names here, aren't there? Well, there's some big names here. I mean, the, the world champion is here. We've got Cavendish who's, who's riding and, and, you know, lots of other big names and good teams as well. I mean, Britain, Britain is an important market for the cycling industry. It's an important market for the teams and they want to be here. And it's, uh, they, you know, this race is a very good reputation, a very well-organized race. And so, uh, you know, the, the riders like coming here. Do you get a sense that amongst the British cycling public, uh, there's a little bit more knowledge and appreciation than there might have been a few years ago? And, and the kind of questions like, why doesn't Mark Cavendish win the Tour de France are being asked less and less frequently? Absolutely less and less. I mean, I was involved in, in cycling organising races like Tour of Britain 20 years ago, um, and uh, it was a completely different situation. Now, the cycling in, in, in the UK, thankfully and, and, and delightfully, has really taken off in the last couple of years between the success of the, of the track cyclists and now onto the road with the Sky Team. And uh, there's a huge following for it. I mean, there's been great crowds here all week um, on the different stages, and uh, it's good. And, I, and long may it continue. And, and uh, let's see more and more Mark Cavendish and more and more, you know, big stars coming out of Britain into into world cycling. It's good for the sport. Well, I fully agree with the comments there from Pat McQuaid. The British public are getting more and more knowledgeable about cycling. Now then. The position of this race in the calendar, Brian, is absolutely perfect for the final preparation for contenders for the world title, because they all go to Copenhagen for the world championships to take place one week today. Well, that's why we've got a quality field uh, this year in the Tour of Britain. The defending champion Todd Hushoff is here, honing his form. He's already won a stage. And then we've got Mark Cavendish, of course, another stage winner here. And, uh, you know, this course in Copenhagen uh, would uh, probably suit him. Well, it's a slightly uphill finish uh, for the sprint, but nothing uh, too demanding. And we haven't had the World Professional Road Champion since 1965, when Tom Simpson pulled on the rainbow stripes. In fact, we've only ever won the crown on one occasion. So is Mark Cavendish going to be that second man to do that? Well, we're starting to see some rain on the camera screens at the moment. 25 seconds is a gap, and uh, this is what these riders don't want. Typically in the city centres like this, we get a lot of traffic, a lot of buses. Sometimes they drop a bit of diesel, so with the rain coming down, it's going to make these uh, final corners very slippy. Well, they did forecast rain later in the afternoon, and they've got it spot on, I'm afraid to say. And you are exactly right there, Brian, and they want to keep away from those white lines as well, because they can become glacial. Yeah, and you've got also got the drain uh, covers in the corner. So uh, Lars Back will be the, the rider at the front for HTC High Road. And when these professional riders go into these corners, they'll just go around and fairly gingerly. They won't take any risks. Just caught a glimpse of a rider from Sky about four back. So the three big squads are now starting to uh, get themselves organised near the front. Well, it's Lars Back, as we just said. Uh, Rick Fens, Vermelfort, and then we had uh, Michael Rogers of Team Sky there. All the same three teams pushing hard at the front and uh, just controlling things on McLaughlin and House. So Sky will be trying to look after the interests of Garant Thomas as he's trying to get another high place finish to try and win the points competition. And if Ben Swift, well, if he's anything like, he could figure strongly as well, although I did speak to him on the signing on before the stage and he did say he's very tired he's carrying the Tour de France in his legs and also the heavy season that he's had so that's the reason we haven't seen too much of Ben Swift 25 seconds in still the advantage well we are in London this is the capital city and uh, Sky have got a big pressure on to try and deliver this win today and uh, Ben Swift could be that man and uh, with the rain coming down some of the riders might not take the risks so uh, if it continues to, to rain in this course, then it may suit uh, Ben Swift. Well, of course, if he's got the sprinting legs on, he's a very, very quick finisher. 
and he's had some classy wins in his career and he's won stages over there in the Tour of California and he's also a winner of the Tour of Picardy. Yeah, he's a class rider. It's just unfortunate that uh, right in his first uh, Grand Tour, the Tour de France, was a very difficult uh, race for him and uh, sometimes that ha that happens and uh, some of the riders uh, find it very difficult. But once you've got that in your legs, you go on to be a that stronger rider. And of course, Ben Swift is still one of the uh, loop of riders that he's been considered as a possible uh, team pursuit member because he comes from a track background in Italy and you never know, he may even get considered for the position to ride the Omnium. He's a class act, he's Ben Swift, and as I mentioned earlier in commentary, one of the three British riders to have won the King of the Mountains in this particular race. Well, coming up to the line now, this is the final sprint in the Yodel competition, and they cross it. It's almost academic, really, but it is McLaughlin first from Christian House. Well, we've got two laps to go now to the finish of this race. McLaughlin just takes a glance over his shoulder. These guys won't be too worried about these uh, conditions as we get a clean sweep of the Antos and Antorton team. And because of the consistent sprinting by uh, Bagdonas, who got more points there, he's a mass 20, which means he will finish second overall in that competition to his teammate, Gilibert. Now, really, the question you've got to ask yourself here, Brian, with the conditions, it's getting wet, Will this play into the hands of the two that are away? Oh, for definite. If the rain comes down a lot harder, there is going to be less uh, risk taken by the bunch, and so they have got a chance. But at the moment, it's uh, not too wet in these corners, so uh, they're just keeping them pegged at about 20 seconds. These conditions are probably more dangerous uh, than if it was pelting down, because when it's just raining intermittently, there are certain parts of the course that are more dangerous. Well, at the end of the day, it's not dampened this crowd. This crowd in uh, London for this uh, final stage has absolutely been tremendous. Well, it's still in the balance. We don't know who's going to win, and we're getting towards the end. Welcome back, and we're halfway round the penultimate loop of this 10-lapper, and Christian House and his breakaway companion, and that is uh, Rowan McLaughlin, are still away. But McLaughlin sprinting out of the saddle here, trying to give Christian House the slip. Well, the gap was coming down, uh, come down under 20 seconds, so uh, McLaughlin decided that he wasn't going to hang about, and he's tested Christian House out, and Christian House was up for the job. Well, the rain is falling, isn't it, now? And uh, one or two sections of this circuit are becoming treacherous. They'll need to feather the brakes and be very cautious. Well, it just means that the bunch will bring them back a wee bit uh, sooner rather than later because, uh, you know, they don't want to take that risk of the rain coming down and if there's any crashes. So this gap coming down now to 13 seconds. Well, that's a terrific slice that's been taken away from their advantage and you get the feeling that the catch could come very, very quickly now. Now, look at this. Christian House has decided he's going to have a go. Well, I don't understand that. McLaughlin tried to jump clear of House. Well, he really hadn't got much chance of dropping him. And now House, right, I've had enough of this. I'm going to see if I can stay away on my own. Oh, Christian is a very experienced rider, he knows, he's been out there all day, uh, OK, it's been a short stage today, but uh, you've had the time travel this morning, a long day for these riders, and with this rain coming down, he thinks he can go around these corners quicker. The only the advantage the, the bunch has got is in on these big long straights, out to the Tower of uh, London and back in again, but uh, through the corners towards the finish and after the finish, that's when uh, Christian could possibly pull out a slight more time. And, of course, on a course such as this, with quite a long straight, the field can sight the leader, and that makes it even more difficult, doesn't it? Well, that's why he's hugging the barriers at the moment. He's trying to keep a, keep out of uh, sight, but uh, McLaughlin's still trying to peg him back. Doesn't look as if he's going to bring him back, but uh, the bunch get closer and closer to these uh, two all the time. With this hard effort of House, I would expect this gap to go up slightly. Well, John Herity is the team manager of the Rafa Conda Sharp squad and they're obviously tackling this final stage to a game plan and it always seems that it's Christian House with his bravery and courage that tries it. Well, we have seen him in a breakaway already in this uh, Tour of Britain. Uh, OK, it wasn't successful, but he's one of these riders that just gives it 100% and uh, showing off his sponsor as well. Yep, his sponsor is profiting from uh, the exposure here with uh, the lone lead as Rabobank come to the front. They're such a polished unit. 
and it's gone up just a tad, 14 seconds. Yeah, with the rain coming down they're not going to take any chances, we are inside the last kilometre to the finishing line and when we hit that finishing line there will be one lap to go, so they will hear the bell, again Rabobank pushing hard at the front because they know that they've got uh, this uh, gold IG Marcus jersey in the back. Well I think you'll see the peloton develop into a bullish mood in the uh, final circuit as they try to position their sprinters. I'm just wondering just how much longer House can stay away. Let's have a look at the cornering technique. Ooh, ooh, he was so cautious. Yeah, and if he was cautious uh, alone, he's going to be very, you know, the, the whole group, the peloton, are going to be uh, very cautious. And so is that man in the gold jersey of uh, Lars Boom. He's not going to take any chances. He knows he's won this race, but he doesn't want to get, try and get up there in this final sprint because he doesn't need to. He's got all the seconds he needs. He just needs to get over this finishing line without crashing. So House now into that long finishing straight. He's got that treacherous corner out of the way. And now he can pile on the gas. And you saw him sprinting away to try and get the gear wound up again. Welcome sound to the ears, music to his ears. There is the bell ringing out. One lap to go. Now then, the question you've got to ask yourself, can House possibly prevent the peloton from catching him? Well, as we head up towards uh, Trafalgar Square, we just take out a right-hand turn down to Embankment Station, a left-hand turn onto Embankment, and then when we get to onto Embankment, we would expect that the teams of Rabobank will take Christian House back for a bunch finish at the finish. You can just see it, the clock has stopped on the uh, on the gantry. 19 seconds, so he's added a little bit more, so let's get round this corner. Yes, he's fine. Now he can settle down, he's got a good straight ahead of him. Well, he's looking back to see if they're uh, chasing him down, and I wouldn't expect so. These uh, corners, the bunch will go round as gingerly as uh, Christian House has just done. We're going down onto the embankment, but it's the whole straight roads all the way out to the bottom hairpin at uh, the Tower of uh, London, and uh, I'm pretty sure these guys will be uh, bringing Christian House back into the fold. House just taking this left hander then for the final time. Longer can he stay out in the clear? You can see the sense of urgency creeping into the delivery there as he sprinted out of the corner. He knows it's going to be nip and tuck. 18 seconds, he's lost another second. Well, that's only in a couple of corners. One second is really nothing but 18 seconds over this next difficult part for Christian House. There's no more corners until you get to the uh, hairpin at the top. So uh, these riders will see him just in the distance and want to bring him back before we get into the technical couple of corners at uh, Big Ben. A couple of technical corners will actually favour him, but the field are now beginning to gather themselves and the big squads moving towards the head here, and that, of course, is going to ignite the burners for the sprinters. Chase is really on. How much longer can this man stay away? Great event next year in the World Championships, by the way, Brian. For the first time, they're going to have a trade team, team time trial championship. That will be an absolute cracker. Well, we've seen that in a lot of the major tours, and, uh, you know, it's a great spectacle. And uh, it's great that uh, Pat McQuaid and the UCI have brought this in, and uh, a lot of teams will be looking at these kind of team time trial, time trial specialists and trying to get them you know, signed up for next year because that will be an important event for them. It's always a thrilling competition, the team time trial, and I think that uh, all those trade teams will be concentrating fully on trying to win that. Well, look at that glorious shot, and there's evidence of the rain falling. The umbrellas are out as they all try, of course, to keep as dry as possible in the closing stages. House continues. But you get the feeling it's not going to be for much longer. Well, there's no place to hide and on these long straights. We've said this before with the HTC pushing hard in the front. Well, come back after this break to witness the concluding stages of this year's tour. Welcome back, and I can tell you that Christian House is still dangling off the front, and the conditions are just as bad as when you saw us last. Well, we're through this uh, tunnel and uh, some of the uh, Europe car riders at the back, but this advantage is very slender, and we see uh, Team Sky on the right-hand side and the left-hand side, the orange jerseys of uh, Rabobank. And Christian House decides to sit up, so this is the catch, and the field are all back together. It's status quo and they reassemble and start to get themselves organised for the final sprint. Well, the front of the bunch has been led by Bram Tanking of Rabobank, Alec Dowsett 
this morning's winner of the time trial sitting in second place and uh, very much the whole of the uh, rubber bank team looking after that goal jersey they just have to get him over that line and of course last boom's a pretty good sprinter as well he's won two stages in this race so far but uh, this kind of finish is not going to be something that he will specialize in when he won in hanley and stoke it was an uphill finish and he also won the sprint into wells but what we must consider here brian is that no dutchman has ever won the tour of britain before that's going to be put right now because last boom is going to climb onto the top spot on the podium great britain well they came in here with high hopes garen thomas well there was talk of him trying to win it he has tried but of course we're going to have to content ourselves with second with steve cummings well, we are into the final three kilometres here, so if any crashes, anything happens, he's not going to lose that. But he is the complete package. He can sprint, he can time trial, he can handle himself in a bunch. And uh, I don't think he's going to take any risks in these final uh, few kilometres and try and go for the stage. He just wants to get across this line and uh, win this Tour of Britain. Just look how slow they're going around here for the retrace back to the finish. That flags up the caution and underlines how slippy it is under the wheel. But the conditions are brightening up at the moment, uh, but uh, you can see the roads are still very damp and the whole race going round this corner very gingerly, not taking any risks whatsoever. But it's all together and all to play for for the stage win. So we're on the retrace now. This is the return back to that finishing funnel. And look here, you already see the big guns starting to come through. Rabobank, Sky, HTC, High Road. So they're all starting to just lift that tempo and the long thin line is forming and the sprinters will be starting to position themselves ready for their lead out. And it's Rick Flens at the front, Douse in second place, Vermelford in third, Lars Back still up there. Another one of the Sky Riders. It looks to me as if that's uh, Michael Rogers. And then you've got the gold IG Markets leader of this Tour of Britain. Well, there's no sign of Cav near the front at the moment, but he always pops up at the right time. Well, he's very canny at that. And uh, just sitting back as we see the Endura Racing team coming up towards the front. And that looks to me as if that's uh, Alex Wetterall, who finished sixth in the time trial this morning. Yep, Wetterall, very good against the clock. If he could open up a gap and settle down to the rhythm, then he would take some pulling back. Look at this, he's burying himself, keeps looking back as he tries to get clear. Well, it's going to be very difficult for him to stay away. You can just see Lars back, pegging him back, and he's out in the saddle, sprinting as hard as he can, but uh, this is going to come down to a bunch kick. But a brave effort, nonetheless, by Wetterow. Pegged at about 20 metres, but you can see that the field are not going to allow him any freedom. Here they come, and they're going to pick him up again, so they'll all be back together. He's just dangling there, but he's not making any headway. Well, it's Lars back, just brings him back. Two of the uh, Sky Riders come to the front and uh, just looking back further down the line, you can just see Ben Swift and the blue jersey of Geraint Ger Thomas. Yeah, they're all back together. Wetterall has been pulled back into the uh, bunch. Dowsett on the front. In fact, the team of Sky, they've got three riders here now. Well, it's uh, Dowsett, Rogers, Matt Heyman and uh, Ben Swift. And then just behind them, as we just said, the blue jersey of Geraint Thomas. I said three, but in actual fact, there are four. Good spot there, Brian. Ben Swift is the man in the uh, fourth position, and he's their big sprinter. Caught another glimpse of the United Healthcare rider of Forster, and he's sitting about fifth place at the moment. He's in the light blue and the black colours, and uh, just looking round there, Bernd Iso, uh, the Aust Austrian uh, rider in HTC High Road, looking round to see where Mark Cavendish is. Forster was third the other day, in uh, one of the stages that German also is powerful now there's another line forming on the right and that is Pieter Gilibert the man that's won the Yodel Spring competition and that means that Anne Poster getting involved in the dust up with well, they're looking after the young Scott Andy Fenn and the team of uh, Anne Poster and Thornton and he finished fifth in Exmouth and uh, second to Cavendish in the bunch sprint yesterday well in these kind of conditions sprinters have to throw caution to the wind as they approach the line and it's all about the courage and bravery as they push and shove and try to get the right position but team sky now on the front really lifting the tempo well it's the aussie matt Heyman pushing hard and just behind him you've got ben swift and the blue jersey of Geraint thomas just look out for the white jerseys of htc as you see bernd isel 
Renshaw and then Cavendish just behind him. Yes, we've seen Cavendish now starting to come through. He's got those dark glasses and he's in that crouching position. He might be small in stature, but he punches well above his weight. Well, they're riding very, very hard at the moment. They're coming up to the final kilometre. And this has been led out here by Europe Card. Second place, you've got Bern Iso of HTC pulling it up at the moment. And uh, just behind them, you've got Ben Swift, Geraint Thomas, Roger Hammond in there. Andrew Fenn and all the riders battling to get into this top corner at uh, Big Ben. So little Roger Hammond in there as well, former sprint winner on two occasions in the stages in the Tour. Well, historically, in the finishes here in London, Enrico De Garno won in 04, Paolini in 05, it was Tom Bonin, the Belgian world champion in 06, Merlo of Italy in 09, and last year it was Greipel, the German, that won the London stage, although he didn't finish here in the centre. And it's round the uh, second last corner, it's Ben Swift at the front, Robert Frost on the left hand side, Gerrit Thomas in the blue jersey, but uh, coming through on the right hand side is Mark Renshaw. All right, look out for Renshaw, Renshaw's got himself in a good position here, but leading the sprint out is Forster. So can the German win the stage here in London? Renshaw is all over him like a rash, trying to get past in the closing stages. Swift had a look across there to see who was going to come up to challenge. And it is, of course, the Manx Express, Mark Cavendish. Here comes Cavendish on the left of the screen. Cavendish takes it and he gives the victory salute. This man is electric in the closing stages. So he's won the opening stage of this tour and the final stage. What a delivery by Mark Cavendish. This man is unstoppable. He came past the rest with unbelievable acceleration. Now then, let's take another look at it. Well, Cavendish is in fifth place. The rider is circled at the moment. And we're going round the final corner. And from here on in, I'm thinking he's given himself too much to do. And uh, as the gap start to open in front of him, but once he gets these afterburners going, he starts to pick them off one by one. And uh, still, he goes now. And uh, what an amazing uh, sight from the helicopter we're seeing as he picks up one, picks up the other, and just comes flying past Mark Renshaw to take the stage away from him. It's just an unbelievable finisher, the fastest sprinter on the planet. Well, that wraps up the Tour of Britain for 2011, and it's the Netherlands that provides us with the winner, and that is Lars Boom. He started as he meant to finish the Tour of Britain. Mark Cavendish, the pedigree sprinter, delighting the fans by doing the one thing he knows how to do better than any other. He wins the Blue Ribbon stage of the Tour then from, surprise, surprise, Mark Renshaw. Geraint Thomas sprinted hard for fourth, ahead of Ben Swift. I was good, really happy him. Um, we were unfortunate then with the with the rain coming down. Didn't want to take too many risks before next week, but uh, it was all right. I ended up so far behind the last corner. The lads were doing a good job. Then I ended up like, yeah, uh, there was some slips in front on the second last corner. And the last corner, this line ended up 20, 30 metres back, but it's over. And uh, I just went and I was just, Picking up speed as always, the last 250 and it just came. So. Mission accomplished then for the Manxman. Next, it's Copenhagen and a serious tilt at history. Well, you know, when you look at the support we've got for cycling in this country now, I think the biggest thing we can do is send the, the strongest team we've ever had for as a Great Britain team to the Worlds next year and bring home the rainbow jersey. So I know everybody's confident. We've been talking about it all week and, uh, and we'll go next year and try and do the country proud. So. Geraint Thomas found his way onto the podium today too, edging out Lars Boom in the prostate cancer points jersey, a degree of consolation at least for a mixed bag of a tour. No changes though for two other jerseys, and Post's Peter Gillibert has worn the Yodel Sprints jersey from Scotland to Scotland Yard. His constant attacks a feature of the early stages, and John Tin and Lock for Rafa Condor Sharp, who came of age on the climbs of the West Country and rightly wins the Skoda King of the Mountains jersey. No doubt at all about the overall winner though, Lars Boom, who has consistently, and in every terrain, proved to be the strongest rider in the race, even if today he missed out on another stage win. I feel confident in a, in a, in a time trial like this, uh, like, like this, uh, 8K, and uh, yeah, second is also nice of course, but uh, the third win was always welcome, but um, I was happy with second place and that I, um, that I didn't lose time on any GC rider, so it was, uh, was good. Well done to Boom, though, a rider whose quiet strength strangled the life out of the opposition. Steve Cummings made it a decent race after all for Team Sky with his brave time trial ride on the streets of London. And Jan Barter's instinctive sprint on the final stage today meant that NetApp also got a man on the podium in London. Well, there we have it, a Mark 
Cavendish stage win on Whitehall, outside Downing Street. That's like the last night of the proms and the Silver Jubilee all rolled into one flag-waving festival. Uh, Mick Bennett's here and uh, Yanto Barker. That is exactly what the crowd came here to see, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, they've put on a show, which is what everybody's come to see, and they really haven't let anybody down. I mean, it's uh, just been a fantastic atmosphere here all day. You couldn't have written the script better for the final stage, could you? Well, it's amazing because he's topped and tailed the whole Tour of Britain. And, you know, he's such a lovely guy. He sometimes gets a, the wrong press, but he's a lovely guy. And he's so behind this event. And he said to me on the way out, he said, I'm coming back to this every year now. Well, that would be great to see. Uh, he's a lovely guy, but he's a top, top sprinter. That's the bottom line. And he's off to the World Championships, Yanto. Can he win it? Honestly, I think he can. I think he's got probably one of the best chances of anybody we've had, uh, you know, in the recent years. So we've seen what uh, Tor Hushford has done for the World Championships jersey and how much presence it gets and the respect and everything. So, you know, it would be phenomenal. I think I speak for everybody when I say we wish uh, Mark Cavendish all the best. Yes, indeed. Uh, Mick, once again, no overall British winner, uh, but a worthy champion in Lars Boom. Amazing bike rider, absolutely amazing bike rider. When he won the sprint into Wells, I thought, this is it. He's got this, this Tour of Britain stitched up and he, it's exactly what he did. Happy? Mick, with the way it's all gone? I'm absolutely delighted. We've done many events here in Whitehall, but today was something special. And what have you got up your sleeves for next year? Uh, probably just to get a little bit more sleep between <laughs> stages. <laughs> that would be nice. Uh, Yanto, are you going to ride it next year? Well, that'll be asking, but fingers crossed, I'd love to. Okay, well, it's been absolutely fantastic. Thank you very much, Mick. Yanto, thank you very much for your time as well. Thank you at home for watching in your large numbers. Uh, that was the Tour of Britain, that was. It was very, very good indeed. Let's all come back for another one next year.